How's it going YouTube? Cody Bernardi here with another YouTube video. In today's video, I want to go over uh, some things you should expect when you go to DEF CON, your first DEF CON actually, and then some other news uh, just in the past couple of weeks or so. So first things first, I want to go over uh, some news in my personal life. So as of today, I have accepted a new job as a threat intelligence consultant with Recorded Future, and I'm really excited about this role. Threat intelligence is kind of like my soft spot. I really enjoy doing that and being able to do that full time with the experience I have in vulnerability management, kind of colliding those two roles into one and providing a service to our customers is something I'm really looking forward to. Uh, but with that, the, the videos that I produce might decline a little bit, the amount of videos I make, simply due to just obviously gonna be traveling a lot and then I'm also gonna be um, you know, learning my job, my new job a little bit more. I've been with Amazon for a little over four years now and I really, it, it, I, I forgot how to put in a two weeks notice. And it was really sad putting in the two weeks notice because I've been with Amazon since uh, Cyber Monday 2015. So with that, let's go over some news in the past couple of weeks. The big one as of today was a vulnerability released a couple days ago, but just now got to headlines um, is Ghost Cat, which is a vulnerability that affects Apache Tomcat versions released in the past 13 years. Now, for those of you that are unfamiliar with Apache Tomcat, it is basically an open source implementation of Java Servlet, Java Server Pages, Java Express Language, and Web so WebSocket technologies. I'm reading this off the Wikipedia page. Um, but it allows you to run web server, uh, a web server online using pure Java HTTP web server uh, and run Java code on it. Now, this new GhostCat vulnerability affects versions, mainline version 7.x, 8.x, and 9.x, so past 13 years. If you're running um, Apache Tomcat, you are more likely vulnerable. Um, and I actually posted a link to Shodan on Twitter saying that there was about 896,000 vulnerable hosts uh, on Shodan. However, Bad Packets responded saying there's actually over a million uh, and they provided a search query on binaryedge.io. So I'll put a link to Shodan and Binary Edge down below. And this one's a CVSS 9.8, I believe, or 9.6, basically meaning it's pretty much like your pants, this is pretty bad. The worst you can be is a CVSS 10 and CVSS 9.0 and above is rated as critical. Like you need to patch ASAP. Uh, there's already exploit code out there, actually four different kinds of uh, exploit code. So one of them is bound to work and there's obviously gonna be mass exploitation of this very soon. Moving on, let's go and look at some other things. DEF CON, they have, uh, opened up call for everything today as well. So if you want to do to do anything at DEF CON as far as contests, parties, villages, talks, demo labs, and everything else, uh, you can now submit that on the DEF CON website. Uh, scrolling down a little bit, uh, NVIDIA fixes high severity flaw in Windows GPU display drivers. Not as much news as the Ghost Cat one, but you know, patch your stuff. It's not that hard. Just patch. You know how easy life would be like with breaches if you just patched most of the stuff you could just fix by patching uh going on baby tracking app design flaw this one's actually kind of funny you cannot remove this baby so you, you might want to uninstall your primary child and maybe i don't know that's kind of funny uh other news uh the computer networks at two fremont street casinos which uh, fremont is a little area downtown las vegas uh downtown las vegas is different than the strip for all, the, for all of you that don't know, I'll talk about DEF CON in a bit, uh, which is in Las Vegas. Uh, but two Fremont casinos were hacked last night, according to multiple sources, slot machines, player loyalty programs, credit card processing, hotel reservations, and ATMs were all affected. And there's videos, actually. The Binion's is still completely shut down. If it wasn't for the music in here, it would uh, be totally... Crews still shut down due to a computer problem. You see, it was pretty much just empty. Very so, yeah, there's no conference going on, security conference going on in Las Vegas right now. The big one this past week was RSA in San Francisco. But, uh, yeah, typically stuff like this where there's some. F
three going on in Las Vegas is during a ha hacker summer camp, which we will now talk about right now. So hi, all of my cat just jumped on my table. Uh, so let's talk about what you should expect when you go to your first DEF CON. So DEF CON, for those of you don that don't know, is kind of the epicenter of security conference thing. It's held in Las Vegas every single year. Usually they cancel it. Um, every year. I'll, I'll talk about all the little lingo and things you, you will hear at DEF CON, but it's held in August or July every year. And there's three conferences that go on that week. They call it Hacker Summer Camp. You have B-Sides Las Vegas, Black Hat USA, and DEF CON. And B-Sides Las Vegas and Black Hat happen at the same time. And then DEF CON uh, finishes up the week uh, from Thursday to Sunday. So what you should expect when you go to DEF CON, a lot of f***ery. Like the lack of better terms, a lot of f***ery. Now, what do I mean by that? You, you have people coming around or from all over the world and, you know, they have different senses of humor and, you know, I really love British people and Australians and, you know, they just, they're just so funny. Uh, but they all, we all con con congregate together and you have things like Hacker Jeopardy and these various different parties. You have talks that are in hotel rooms, you have parties and did I mention parties? Yeah. And there's also parties uh, and then you get talks and villages uh, and you get miscellaneous things that, you know, some companies will pay you to do. And I'll give you some anecdotal things that I've experienced at DEF CON. So when you go to DEF CON, um, it's a reminder you're in Las Vegas, which is a desert city. Someone decided one day, like they looked at a giant thing of desert and they're like, I'm going to build strip clubs and casinos here. And people bought into it. It's really hot in Las Vegas. However, with that said, I've personally lived in Georgia and South Carolina during the same time. And it's nowhere near as bad uh, because there's no humidity. It's just dry air, but it's pretty hot. But the good thing is when you stay at a casino or a resort, they, they have pools and stuff. I know not everyone stays on the strip. It helps to stay on the strip, but I it does get pretty expensive, especially if you're paying out of pocket. Uh, so try to find a place with a pool. There's parties everywhere that doesn't that don't cost money to get into, and you can just swim in their pools and stay cool. But just keep in mind, pack like you're going to be sweating your ass off the entire time because you more than likely will. The conferences are all inside the casino, so you're going to be cool in there. Next thing, uh, when I said there's going to be a bunch of fuckery, you're going to see people with mohawks. You're going to see people with different colored hair. Uh, you're going to see people with antennas coming out of their backpacks. You're going to see people walking around with antennas coming out of their head. It's just weird stuff. Like, it is so funny. I enjoy every bit of DEF CON. I enjoy the time that I have just, like, people watching. But it's not like I'm, like, looking down. Like, you don't look down on people. It's like, that's kind of cool. And you can, you know, you can go talk to people. You know, everyone at DEF CON wants to talk to other people. It's kind of the one time a year where I can connect with people that I, you know, talked to the previous year and just kind of catch up on everything uh but everyone's really cool to cool there i mean i've never met a dickish person at defcon there are some unwritten rules and there are some written rules at defcon as long as you follow those rules you're fine you're gravy i mean you don't have to talk to anyone you're not forced to but you know everyone's super friendly and you can just chat with anyone and learn something new so with that when i said the unwritten and written rules so the rules the, the actual rules on the defcon website physical violence is prohibited harassment of any kind is prohibited we don't support illegal drug use minors should be accompanied by parents or guardians please refrain from doing anything that might jeopardize a conference or attendees such as lighting your hair on fire or throwing lit road flares in elevators defcon goons are there to answer your questions defcon goons are the the people wearing red they usually have a, a different badge uh, they're just the volunteers anyways moving on keep everything moving hotel security is there to watch over their property each has a, a different mission and it is wise to not anger the hotel people please be aware that if you engage in illegal, illegal activities, there is a long, a large contingency of feds that are attending DEF CON. Talking about how you're going to bomb the RNC convention in front of FBI agents is a career limiting move. Uh, code of conduct. So that's actually kind of what I want to look at. <laughs> uh, let's see. Dark Tangent. So Dark Tangent is the founder of DEF CON. Uh, let's see. So pretty much 
act like a, a decent human. You know, you could cuss, you know, just be mindful of like where you cuss, who you can cuss up in front of. Like if you're around a bunch of adults and you're just shooting the shit. Yeah. I mean, don't mind it. If you're near like the roots asylum where there's kids learning how to hack, how to solder and all that, you know, don't be an asshole in front of them. I mean, they're kids like they, you know, just, just be a, a, a decent human. That's, that's all it is. Be a decent human. Illegal stuff is going to happen whether you like it or not. People are going to fuck with ATM machines. People are going to try to social engineer you. And that's another point. You will, if you, if you display that you work at a big company or whatever, you're going to put a target on your head and people are going to try to buy you free drinks and try to make you disclose things that you wouldn't normally disclose. So that's going to happen. It's, it's just bound to happen, especially at Black Hat, where you're going to have a lot of big wigs there uh, or C-level people. So just be mindful of that. Uh, but other than that, uh, the another rule that I haven't seen yet, no filming of people. Now, it, it kind of gets misconstrued when people say no filming at all at DEF CON. It really depends. The whole purpose of not filming at DEF CON is like panning and filming people because there's people there that are on lists there are people there that want to be undercover they don't want to be on the internet and that's really fine i mean that's that's their choice and we got to respect that so don't film people without their permission but with that it is totally okay to take pictures at defcon i mean they have like giant banners uh, where it's meant for you to take photos and there's no backdrop. You can't get people in the background. So yes, do take photos at DEF CON, like share your experience. It's an amazing time, but be mindful that there are people there that, you know, don't want to be known that they're at a hacking convention due to their employer, due to their country. I mean, again, like I said, you're going to have people from all over the world here and, you just got to be mindful of that. So don't film people without their consent. Uh, and then some unwritten rules of DEF CON is the 321 rule. And that basically is three hours of sleep a night, two meals a day, and one shower per day. DEF CON, I mean, we all work in tech for the most part. You know some stinky people. So wear deodorant like i keep in my backpack i actually have a video of what i carry at defcon i keep some deodorant on my backpack at all times just in case i get a little whiff of my pits and i'm like god i smell like a gym so I like I, I throw some you know deodorant on i mean it doesn't hurt you could get it through tsa just fine but be mindful of that three hours of sleep a night two meals a day and one shower per day with that what you should expect as far as the fun activities at DEF CON. So DEF CON, other than the talks, which I actually don't attend, I don't attend any talks at DEF CON because to get into a talk at DEF CON, depending on what the talk is, you're going to have a huge line. And actually the lines aren't too bad. You, you have an opportunity to be close with people and you have nothing other than do other than to talk. So it's a great time to actually socialize with people, but they actually have specific happy hours at DEF CON where you could just do that anyways. But all the talks at DEF CON are uploaded to YouTube. So I just wait like a month and watch those, uh, you know, whatever talk I want to watch. Most talks are uploaded to YouTube. There are a few off the, off the record talks that won't be talked or discussed anywhere. Uh, and I'll explain that in a bit, but for the talks, the most part, I just watch those on YouTube. I try to attend as many villages as possible. I mean, DEF CON, they have villages from anything from ICS, industrial control systems, hack the sea. So anything involved with tracking ships and any uh, systems on like freighter ships, uh, aviation hacking village, car hacking village, biohacking village, temper evident hacking village, lock picking village, blue team village. I mean, you can think of a village. There's going to be a village for it. There's vet sec, uh, which is veteran specific or vet con, uh, which is specific to veterans in any branch in any military of any country come together and do typical military bullshit jargon, shoot the you, if you're a vet, you know what exactly I'm talking about. So I try to focus my time socializing with people, kind of learning something new, going to these different villages. Uh, and then when it comes to the nighttime, uh, one does not go to bed at a normal time at DEF CON. If you, I jokingly tell people it sucks when you have, and you're giving a talk at like 10 AM because no one's going to show up because everyone's hungover or still drinking from the night before. So there are plenty of parties at DEF CON. Um, there's actually like a whole... I think Google calendar that you can download or, you know, pull from of all of the parties that happen at DEF CON. You have the typical corporate parties that are obviously sponsored by companies. Those are kind of, you know, very 
formal in some manner. They give you like some shirts and stuff. That's cool and all. The mo the most extravagant extravagant thing I've gotten from a corporate party is actually a free trip to Santa Monica to do whiskey tasting on top of a hotel uh, and then talk a little bit about the job that they had open. Uh, they, they It was all inclusive. They paid for the plane ticket. They paid for the hotel. Usually the corporate parties, they rent out something super nice. Uh, Amazon, a couple of years, they rented out the top floor at the Aria uh, you know, the Aria with the staircase and all of that, that was super fun. Uh, but that's all meant to pull in people to, you know, interview them and stuff like that. Uh, and then you also get the non-corporate parties and those are the ones that get a little rowdy. So the one that I, that I attend every year is DC 801, which is DEF CON 801 or Salt Lake City. And they throw a party and the, the whole thing is they, they have again, like a pretty nice hotel room, a suite, or I don't know what you would call it. And they start the party at 8.01 p.m. And they have a bunch of beer and a bunch of liquor from Salt Lake City. And it's open. And their whole thing is to party until the sun rises the next day or until they get evicted from the hotel room. And you can, you, I, I can assume you guess which one actually happens most often. But yeah, but there's a there's a ton of parties that happen. You get queer con. And I'm, I'm having a brain fart right now of the different kinds of parties there are. But there, it, it's kind of just open and you can show up some of them you might need to know someone but yeah uh and then I, I mentioned earlier about off the record talks now at b-sides and defcon there's two off the record locations uh, at b-sides las vegas you have this thing called the underground where people give a talk and you know it might be something that's ongoing that's nation state related uh something that they don't want their name attached to what stays in there stays in there. There's no filming. There's no recording. None of that. If you get caught doing that, A, you get booted from the conference and B, whatever you recorded that on gets smashed. And actually at B-Sides, they have like a legit hammer, like a sledgehammer and they like break your uh, so it's they keep that, you know, off the record and force it pretty seriously. And then at DEF CON, they have Sky Talks, which is the same concept off the record nothing gets talked about outside of that room and yeah and then you get some other like even smaller off the record talks that aren't really hosted by defcon or b-sides i attended one last year in just a hotel room i think there was maybe 15 people of us and we were just in a hotel room blinds were closed and we were just talking and they were just talking about whatever they needed to talk about it's off the record so uh, but you do get you do get into stuff like that, um, and then the more you go to DefCon, the more unlikely you'll get to know a goon, uh, and those are the volunteers at DefCon. They were the red and all that. But I'm running out of time here, uh, so I'm gonna end it right here. Thank you for watching. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon, hit the like button, share this with everyone you know. I would greatly appreciate that. I'm sorry for the abrupt end. I'm at 20 minutes right now, so goodbye.